give a lecture why I choose prone uh, over supine. Okay. But uh, I believe that before you can say or choose one, you have to be doing both. All right. So let me give you a little uh, introduction of my supine PCNL experience. Yes, uh, I think I believe I'm the first one who did the supine PCNL in, in my country. I did a modified Bart's free flank position and I did achieve my goal of uh, being uh, stone free in that patient. Okay. And I was very thankful. Uh, to my professor then, Dr. YouTube. I know you're very familiar with him, all right? And this was actually followed by uh, two more cases, which uh, fortunately, I was still also successful in those two in achieving stone free, but they're just pelvic and partial staghorn stones, okay? Due to a feeling of inadequacy that I, I need a human touch to teach me, I went and seek some mentors very close to me, in the Philippines, one in Vietnam, well, no less than Dr. Dong, okay? He helped me, I saw his technique using a free flank position. And then I went to Malang, Indonesia. There I met my friend, Dr. Paxi Satagara, okay? Which he also do a modified Bart's free flank position. After learning their secrets, increasing my confidence, then I started doing supine PCNL more and more here in the country, okay? And then, even in my center in National Kidney. So yes, I have seen the advantages of the supine PCNL. There's minimally movement in repositioning. The anesthesiologist is relaxed because they can always convert to general anesthesia from a spinal anesthesia. Okay, there is said to be fewer cardiac and respiratory changes, less pressure-related injuries, and less pleural. Of course, the less radiation in the hands. Stone gravity can easily fall, by, uh, easily fall because of gravity and I can do the procedure sitting down, okay? And of course, the advantage of doing a combined RIRS. And these are the advantage I've seen and experienced when I'm doing spine PCNL. One, you have to make a longer nephrostomy track, especially if you're doing an anterior pole track approach, okay? The instrument can be tight because of some limitations in the OR table and patient's hip. But again, this is relative. Depends on how you're going to position your patient. And this for me is a little bit hard, doing an upper pole approach and getting the upper pole stone, okay? Uh, I've seen it done, especially from Dr. Paxi, how he does a, super pole, a superior pole approach. And it's doable, but again, it's not that easy. There's also the hypermobility of the kidney. One, you have to hold either the abdomen so that the kidney won't move, okay? Pelvocalisial system may be collapsed, okay, due to the gravity. Uh, many cal calluses may be, uh, may not, may be missed, and the small fragments of stone that can be collected in those calluses may be missed, okay. Longer OR times, if especially dealing with staghorn calculus, okay. And it was said to be higher, uh, to be associated with higher blood transfusion. And here's a paper by Dr. Yan Wang, Dr. Wang, okay. That's, that concluded that yes, both the prone and the supine are safe for PCNL. However, they noted that the operation time was longer in the supine group compared to the prone and that those in the supine group frequently require second operation due to lower stone clearance rate. So what about prone? Look at this, a very wide surgical field for puncture, okay? Easily can approach the upper access Okay, and there will be definitely a good distension of the collecting system. Okay, look at my case here. It's a full staggering calculus. I have a good nephroscopic manipulation and it made it possible for me to access all calluses and doing a one access, getting all the stones. And should the patient have another stone on the other side and the time, is per, uh, and, and the time will permit, you can even do a bilateral PCNL in one sitting. Okay. There's actually low risk for any lung, pleural, visceral organ, especially if you know what you're doing. And the question whether you can do a combined surgery, well, yes, um, as uh, presented by Dr. Hani and Dr. Pace, uh, the prone flex position. What are the disadvantages? Well, basically now I can say that disadvantages are basically a relative disadvantages because some can be addressed already. Then is the anesthetic concerns, Morbidly obese patients and even pediatrics, 
and those even with skeletal deformities. And they say that the repositioning takes a longer time, you need more power, but once you have rotated and seen the team of Dr. Pal in, De in New Delhi, they do it only with three or four people, and it's very quick. It's, you j they just have to pull the patient and turn it around. So all this anesthetic fear can be resolved if you have a great anesthet anesthesia team. This is my friend, Dr. Castillo. And since the start, 2010, I never had a dislodged ET tube. I never had a problem in, any, in, in all of those cases. Okay? So why I still do prone? Well, again, it's familiarity. I, I, I've been doing it for the last decade. Okay? And this I learned from my friend and teacher. Dr. Pal, okay, and he has visited the country more than two times, three times, just to show us his, his skills and sharing his expertise. I have done from standard and I've done mini PCNL. I even do combination PCNLs, okay? I have done single, dual, even multi-track, all right? And I have already gained confidence to do different kind of access from the anterior, uh, from the inferior, superior, even as high as between 10 and 11 ribs, decreasing the complication. To date, yes, admittedly, I have done quite a number of cases, not, but so far compared to the bosses here in this team, okay? But I have a wide range of patients already from ages seven, and the oldest, my oldest is 93 years old, okay? This is from a friend, okay? I have seen, a, I have done patients with kyphosis and even physically challenged patients. All you have to do is adjust your table, okay? Manage how they're not supposed to have any pressure injuries, okay? And you have to be in good co co communication with your anesthesia. Okay. I have even handled some malrotated kidneys and a lot of horseshoe kidneys. But yes, I do share some sleepless night events. And these are some of it and the list. The only thing I'm proud of is when I compare it with the international literature, uh, such as the crows, I think I am doing, I'm still doing good. I am way below from their acceptable or not even acceptable, way below from their morbidity rates or percentage. One of these cases, I called my mentor, Dr. Pal, okay, asked for help, what to do. You know, he's my go-to guy with every time I have a problem. And uh, he will help me manage it. And I won't forget how, what he said to me, that you are not doing enough cases if you are not having any complications. So I guess I have to accept that along the way I will have complications, but it's a good thing that I can manage it and I have friends to help me manage it. It is in these cases that we learn and apply it to our next patients. Here's another study done in October 2018, okay, saying that supine position is safe. However, up to date, advantage over the prone position is far from proven. It is not superior to prone position in terms of other critical factors, such as stone-free, complication rates, and blood transfusion rates. So, why prone to stay? Again, familiarity, okay? Here, this is a hydronephrotic kidney, full staghorn. I cleaned it up, but look at that. You won't be able to see this much dilatation in a supine position unless you're going to do a rubber stopper to, so that the, the fluid won't easily leave your amplats. But it's wonderful, okay? Great support team. I have it. I have it in my, in my hospital. And despite the heterogeneity of my patients, I have an acceptable morbidity percentage. So I'm happy with it. Especially my patients are still continuously being satisfied. So. My conclusion is that it is not whether prone is better than supine, but it is whether which position you can do the job. Wait. Oh, wait, wait. Patient safety and expectation should always be the end point in every case. Okay, and we have to be versatile. Learning how to do both positions increases the chances of that urologist to achieve his number one goal. Prone is my first love, but supine, I tell you, is very, very near second. Thank you for your kind attention. Wow. 
Thank you, Harmi. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, you can stop sharing. Yes, sir.